Hello everyone, this is Sushma, business manager at iLogic I'm, and I'm back with another webinar with the latest release of Mapletics. All lines will be muted during this webinar and if you have any questions to ask, you can use the chat window to type in your queries and I'll be answering, you, answering them for you. At the end of this webinar, we'll also have a Q&A session. Before we dive into the session, let me give you a quick brief about iNogic. iNogic is one of the leading service providers in an ISV. We have been into the business for more than a decade now, and our blogs are also well known among the CRM community. Apart from MapReduce, we have also been focusing on building productivity apps which reduce multiple steps in CRM with one-click solutions. You can see a few of our offerings listed on the slide here. Besides developing apps, we are also a system integrator and we assist our partners and customers with offshore development services. If you would like to discuss requirements for the same, you can contact us at crm at inogic.com. Let's have a look over the agenda for today's webinar. So we'll be going through the growth of MapRedix over the years. And after that, we'll be seeing the market scope and the impact of MapRedix which will be followed by the overview of the features that I have listed for today's webinar, and which will be followed by the live demonstration of all of those features. And after that, I'll be starting a little poll where you can vote in for the features that you find the most useful. And lastly, we'll be having a Q&A session. So Mapletix is available, uh, which works within the Dynamics CRM. It is available for the online on-premises as well as data wars as well. <clears throat> so let's have a look over the growth of Mapletics over the years. Mapletics has been there for more than a decade now. We started in 2011 as a store locator and we developed it more as our team researched about the customer requirements and of course the valuable feedback from our customers and partners contributed a lot. As we grew, we added the proximity search, routing optimization, territory management and many more features over the period. Now let's move on to understand the importance of locational intelligence. According to the executives worldwide, the locational component in the business's business performance has been playing a major role in many business sectors like finance, retail, logistics, real estate, and tourism. Further, its importance is going to increase even more into the coming few years. <clears throat> if we look at this report, it shows that the locational intelligence is really important to the businesses irrespective of their industry verticals, be it B2C or B2B, the industries like healthcare, finance, technology, manufacturing, education, or be it any other industry, the locational intelligence has been playing a major role in the business performance. Moreover, in any business, the locational intelligence is a uh, second. Yeah, locational intelligence is being used by people into various job functions. So it's not just limited to the C-level leaders of the company, but also the people into R&D, operations, marketing and sales, and many other job functions. And they are also utilizing the locational intel intel information into their day-to-day -day work. Let's have a look over this chart. This shows the various use cases that require the locational intelligence. Use cases like uh, visual uh, data visualization, the logistics, uh, fleet routing, tracking, and many others are of great importance in various organizations. And Mapletics is one such solution that will help you to fulfill all of these use cases. Before we start with the overview of the features to be covered today, let's see a few of our examples based on the impact of Mapletics into the business. So with Mapletics in use, the organizations are able to reduce mileage cost by 10 to 30 percent. And we all know how valuable it is to save fuel and times when the price is going up. Scheduling field trips that used to be a tedious process with Mapletics, people are able to save one to two hours daily, and that amounts to about $800 of money each month. 
Moreover, while managers used to spend four to five hours on managing territories, Mapletics has, re has reduced it to a, just a few hours, along with the better visualization, the administration, and the alignment of the territories. So basically, while you are uh, planning routines and processes, Mapletics helps you to make the most out of it. Let's have a look over the list of features that I'll be discussing today. So first, I'll start with the enhancement that we have done into the mobile UI. So we have revamped our mobile UI in, to increase the user friendliness as well as the look and feel of the mobile UI of Mapletics. Next, we'll be seeing how Mapletics now integrates with the SRE account as well. So if you are using any ArcGIS files to see the geographical insights of any country, state, using the SRE account, so you can integrate SRE account with Mapletics and you'll be able to access the ArcGIS files over here. The third feature that we uh, that I'll be showing is the actual versus proposed route information. <clears throat> so this feature will become really useful while you have a whole team out there traveling on the field. So while you want to compensate with them with the money that they have spent on traveling, you will be getting the exact details of the distance and the, tra uh, the time that they have traveled on the field. Based on that, you will be able to calculate your own fare for compensation. Next, we'll be looking into the enhancements that we have done into auto scheduling. So auto scheduling is an existing feature of Mapletics where we have added the calendar based view as well as trip summary panel. So with this calendar based view as well as the trip summary, this becomes very much more informative based on the schedules that you have created. After that, we'll be seeing that we have he supported the option of plotting multiple data sources at once. So we already has the, have these option uh, earlier as well. However, as you all know, Mapletics has been built based on the valuable support and feedback of our customers as well as partners. And based on the demand of our customers as well as partners, we have now removed the restriction of uh, plotting just three data sources at a maximum. So with this latest release, you'll be able to plot multiple data sources together at the same map. Next, we'll be looking at, uh, at a new PCF control, that is the auto suggest PTF PCF control, which you can add to the any uh, the field with the data type single line text field. And you will be able to just type in there. It will give you the auto suggestions. If you select the suggestion, that address will get filled into the address fields. Next, we'll be looking into the dashboard enhancement. So dashboard, uh, you, you already know that Mapletics helps you to create multiple dashboards based on the required filters that you want to see multiple data all into the single class. So within this dashboard, we have enhanced the dashboards of Mapletics using the further uh, option to interact with the dashboard as well as make it more informative. <clears throat> Next option is street view. So this becomes very handy while the person is out on the field traveling on the road. So the street view will now help them to get more relevant uh, understanding of the road that they are traveling and they will be able to follow their route and meet people right on time. Lastly, we have the supported the uh, Apple Maps as well. So we had already supported the Google Maps as well as the Waze app, the WAZE into the navigation. So basically, every Mapletics user will be can be <clears throat> can choose their own preferred app for navigation, be it Google Maps or the Waze app, WAZE. Along with that, into this rela latest release we have added the support for Apple Maps. So all of our users who are using the iPhone or the, uh, the iPad, you'll be able to use Apple Maps as well in order to navigate yourself for any particular route. So let's start with a live demonstration of the same. So here, let me just share my screen. So I hope uh, you're able to see my screen over here. So let me just switch to the dynamic CRM. So I'll start with the overview of the uh, the Mapletics app that we have uh, uh, that we have enhanced. 
Okay. So here uh, we have uh, revamped the whole uh, uh, whole uh, Maplytics UI. So what I'll do is that I'll simply go to the detail map. So uh, as we also have a huge customer base already using Maplytics, so we have kept the UI very simple and we have enhanced the user friendliness and the features are almost the same so that our existing customer base doesn't face any issues and we have revamped the UI, the user interface itself. So here you can see this is the detail map and here you can see at the bottom you have the two options over here the direction and the search. So let's go for the search option over here and here you can see the features that we have into the desktop we have the features here as well. So here this this option this part of the card shows the data for the uh, the option for cre uh, plotting the proximity search. So let's start with plotting some data. So I have gone for the dashboard over here, uh, sorry, data source over here. I can choose one entity and here you can see the option to plot the view. So here let me choose one of the view and I'll click on go. <clears throat> so this is by location option. Here it will show you the data specially based on the, rec uh, the addresses it has within the records. Now here, if you want to see the data on the hover of any record, you can just single click on that particular record and here you will be able to see the data on the hover. Now, if you want to see the data on the tooltip card of any particular record, you can simply double click on any particular record and here you will be able to see the respective details into this tooltip card at the bottom. So here, based on your configuration into the settings, you will be able to see the respective required data into this tooltip card. And here you can see the whole tooltip card actions are also there. So you can perform the tooltip card actions on the respective records as well. OK, so now here, if you want to go back to the map or the plot cards, so plot records card, what you can do is that simply uh, click outside the card. So I'm just clicking on the map over here and you can see the card closes. Now here I can again go for the search button. So this will again open the plot records card. Now here let's select some category. <clears throat> so here I'm choosing industry for an example and here it will plot the data based on the various industries it falls into. Now here you can see the push pins are now into different colors and shapes. Right. So now here you can see at the top left corner, you have two buttons over here. If I click on the topmost button, so this is the layer menu. So layer menu will allow you to see all of the data that you have plotted on the map. So you can see accounts has been listed over here. You can choose the toggle button to make the data show and hide on the map. Now the second button that you see on the top left corner is the category card. So if I click on this, you can see the category card has opened up at the bottom. Now here I can simply drag this card up to see the whole details into the card. So this is showing me all of the push pins that are representing the various industries over here. So I can see which push pin is representing which in, uh, industry over here. If I want to focus on any particular industries, I can just deselect the ones that I do not want and I can focus on the required industries. So this is how you can see this category card. You can just scroll down and up and you can see all of the data within this category card. Again, you can simply go outside the card to close this card over here. Now let's go ahead and see the next option which we have here, which is by region. So here you can see multiple options to plot the regions like city, state, county, country, postal code, etc. Let's go for postal code over here. You can just type in some postal code. And like this, I'll just select some postal codes. I can select the country. And here, the view has been selected. Let me click on go. So this will plot the data based on the uh, various regions that I have entered, the postal codes basically. It will plot the prospective data. So you can see this is the region by region option and you'll be able to see the data coming from the respective postal codes that I have selected. Now the third option that you see into the plot records card is the 
template option. So if you are searching something very frequently, so in that case, you will be able to plot a particular template over here. So here I have created one template already. Let me select a template over here and I'll click on go. So here you can see the data has been plotted based on the template that I had selected. Right. So if you want to search something very frequently, you can just save it as a template and plot that template directly. Now here you can see at the top topmost right corner, you can see three buttons over here. The first button is for the map mode. So if you want to switch from road map to aerial map mode, you can do so like here and here for the th third option is refresh button if i just click on refresh button that will just refresh the map on the uh, the, the map that you have opened now i'll explain the second button later now let's see the how the uh, the the direction works so what i can do let's me just plot some data so here i'll just plot some data over here so just like you do in the desktop or you did into the earlier Mapletics mobile UI, you can simply right click anywhere on the map and you will be having the two, three options over here, set as the region, set as destination and adding to a route. So I'll select the add to route option over here. I can right click on some more records. I can choose some more records to be the part of the route. So here I have chosen some records over here. If I go for directions, you can see these data has been selected. The records have been selected in order to go for the respective route. Now here you can go for the options. You will be getting the details here. The options that you can choose, you can choose whether you want to optimize the direction based on the shortest time or shortest distance. You can choose whether you want to avoid high avoid toll roads or if you want to avoid highways, you can these choose these options. Further, you can select if you want to see the traffic on the map. So you can click on go. This will allow you to plot the respective route based on the selection of the records. So here you can further see the option of along the route as well. So here you can just you can just uh, see the option of along the route. So if I just click on along the route, you can see the, the default option, the default distance 0.5 miles. I can click on go and this will filter out the data based on the 0.5 miles of distance from the route. OK, so further, if in case you are not able to find some records along the route, so in that case, you can also search for the proximity. So let me just deselect this and here I can choose the proximity option as well. So for that, I'll choose the search option and here I'll just put some proximity. For example, I'll just put, let's say, 2 and 2.5 and here I can click on go so here you will be able to search for the proximity and you will be able to see all of the data that are within the nearby area using this proximity search so this is how you will be able to use this mapletix mobile ui along with that while you are traveling on the field you will be able to search for the nearby records as well and if you want to search for the nearby geotag bing map locations you can right click anywhere set it as pui location and further choose the POI option over here. So you can see many icons are, or, or, or are there here. So you can just click on some icons. Let's say I'll go for the restaurant option. I can click on restaurant and here you will be able to see the respective locations coming up. So I can click on these locations. I can see the data over here. I can double click on the respective location and I can see the tooltip card opening up for that. And similarly, I can also choose the other option. <clears throat> so here you can just type in something and you'll be getting a whole list of the options over here. Here you can also just type in some options. Let's say I'll just choose. Let me just reconnect. OK, so here I'm, I hope uh, you are able to see the screen again. So here you can just uh, see the respective details over here of the respective locations that are available. These are the geotag Bing map locations that you can search. There's a whole list of locations that are available. If you're not able to 
uh, search some a particular location so you can also just type in a keyword over here and you will be able to search for that particular location as well so here you can see the locations have been plotted i can single click on the records i can double click on the records as well so this is how you can choose the mathematics ui and you will be able to choose the features that you want to plot and you will be able to play around with all of the features that are available and this will allow you to help you to plot multiple uh, yeah, you'll be able to plot the multiple data over here as well as you'll be able to choose to create the routes as well as the PUI locations. Now, the one button that I missed earlier, so which was the my location. So if I click on this button, let's see what it does. So this will basically read your current GPS location. Okay, so this basically allows you to use this GPS location while you are out on the field. This becomes very relevant if you are searching something around your current location so if you are searching something around your current location you can set it as gps location you just click on this button the middle button my uh, locate me button and this will plot your current gps location on the map over here so this will basically give you more relevant data so this was all of the mapletics ui that we have added into our latest release let me know your feedback on the same if you want to add something if you have any feedback we'll be glad to consider that as well now let's move on to the next features that we have on the list so here let me just close this and I'll go back to the my desktop. So let's move on to the next feature that we have on the list, which is the just a second. So let me just share my screen again and here. Yeah, another impo very important feature that I wanted to show here is the Navigate 2. This is a very important feature that we have added to our latest release. So what it does mean is that while you are out on the field traveling on the map, so you can, if in case you received an urgent request to meet any particular client, in that case, you can just use one click to create a route directly for that particular client. Okay, so what I can do is that I can just see this and just plot some data over here. Okay, so because I am in India, I'll be just plotting some data from India itself. So here. Now, let's say I'm a salesperson out on the field and I'm providing some service or I'm just meeting the clients for sales. So in that case, let's say any particular client sent me an urgent request for meeting uh, with me. So what I can do is that I can double click on that particular record. And here you can see these tooltip card actions at the bottom. Now here you can see the second button over here. This is a new button that we have added. This is a button for navigation get to if i just click on this button so see what happens this basically leads me to the google maps directly so what happened is that it will give me the route directly created from my current location to that particular customer's location so basically while your people are out on the field within a, within just one click you can you will be able to get the route created for any particular record that you want to go and visit so this is one of the very important features that we have added to make it easier for the field reps while they are out on the field and want to reach any particular customer very urgently so this just adds just one click and you'll be able to get the route created directly <clears throat> so this was another feature and let's move on to the next feature that we have listed which is the actual words versus proposed route information so here let me go for the dynamic crm over here and here so what is actual versus proposed route so while you have a whole team traveling out on the field and they spend some money right to travel on the field so in that case if you want to uh, filter your uh, just uh, uh, see how much traveling they have done and you want to compensate them with the respective money they have spent on the field in that case you will be getting the exact details of the distance and the, uh, the time they have actually traveled on the field so here i can just go for one of the the uh, route that i have created let me plot one route over here 
Okay, so I have opened one of the routes and here I can just plot this route. So uh, how to use this feature? So here, if I just open the plot the route on the map. So while the sales person is out on the field following a route that they have been given and for, to follow and meet the people. So in that case, what the sales person has to do is that just plot the route and here navigate themselves on the map. Now here, if I click on navigate, you can see the card looks a bit different. We have added this particular button of start trip over here. This is a new button that we have added. Now, what happens while the salesperson is out on the field to meet the client, they can just start the trip over here. So what happens, it will lead you to the turn by turn navigations on the Google Maps and you can just go ahead and meet the customer. Now, once you have completed the trip, you come back to the respective map again and you stop this trip. OK, so what happens in between while you start the respective trip, the feature of real time tracking within Maplytics will be tracking your details on the field, which means that it will be able to understand when did you start the trip for meeting a particular client and when did you finish meeting a client. And similarly, you can do so for the rest of the meetings as well. So once the salesperson has done meeting with the clients, the course, the reporting managers can go ahead and they can see the details into the desktop. <clears throat> so let me just stop this share screen of the mobile. And I'll go for the desktop. Okay, so I hope you are able to see the screen. Now, once the salesperson have completed their trips, what their reporting managers can do is they can just go for the respective route. And within this route over here, they can just filter the route over here. They can see the route. And here they will be able to see the details into the route itself. So I have an example of the same. So here you can see this is one of the route opened up. So here the tab of the bay points. This is the place where you'll, give, you'll be getting the whole table of information. So you can see this is the column for estimated travel distance, right? So estimated travel distance is basically the distance that they are supposed to follow on the map. Uh, on the field based on the route they have been assigned with and similarly here you will be getting this column of actual travel distance so actual travel distance is basically the real time distance that they have actually traveled on the field so here you will be able to see that there's some difference based on the estimated travel distance as well as the actual travel distance now here you can see the estimated travel time this estimated travel time is based on the route that they have been given to follow the route they have been assigned with and similarly you can see the column of the actual travel time. This will basically show the actual time that they have spent in real time into the field. So you can see again, there's some difference between the actual travel time and the estimated travel time. Right. So based on this, you will be getting these information of what was actually assigned to them, what distance and time they were supposed to follow. And for the you will be getting the actual distance and time they have actually traveled on the map. And using the CRM, you can just export this data into uh, uh, export this data for yourself and you'll be able to use this data to further calculate the compensation that you have to give to your field team. So this was the feature of actual versus proposed route. Now let's move on to the next feature we have on the list, which is the SRE integration. So um, we also know, we already know that many organizations are into using SC, the RTIs files in order to get the geographical insights of the various countries that they are working into, right? So here, what we have done is that we have enable the integration of SD account within Maplytics. So here, what you can do is that simply go to the Maplytics app and then settings. You can go for the Maplytics configuration detail record. And here there is one record which does not have a user. So I can just click on this record. This is for admin purpose, right? Now here you can see the tab over here, the ArcGIS tab. 
Now here you can see the options, the, the credentials basically. So if you have an S3 account already created, you can just go through my user manual where I have written the step-by-step -step instructions to how to uh, configure a S3 account within MapRedex. So you can just put up the credentials as per the user manual. And once you have configured the S3 account successfully, you will be able to access your ArcGIS files that are within the S3 account within the Mapnetix maps. Now here, what you have to do is that you have to go to the map to access the ArcGIS files. So here I can click on accounts or any other uh, entity and here you will be getting the buttons. So here I'll go for the detail map and you must be familiar with a feature of overlay within Mapnetix. So you will be able to access ArcGIS using the overlay itself. So here I'll just scroll down and you can see the option of overlay so overlay is a feature that will allow you to see multiple layers of data on the map okay so here earlier we had only two options territory and file now we have the third option as well you can click on arcgis and here you will be getting the options to select your files the arcgis files that you have within the s3 account so here let me choose one of the files over here now here you can further select an attribute to color code your regions as well okay so here i have selected the file over here i can select an particular attribute this attribute selection is a category attribute this will help you to color code your uh, regions based on this particular attribute now here we have this summary attribute so here you will be able to select some attribute that you can you want to see on the click of the regions as well so now i'll just click on search and here you will be able to see the file plotted on the map along with the color coding based on the attribute that i have selected right so here you can see the file has plotted on the map and based on the attribute that i had selected this has color coded the regions as well i can click on any particular region to see the summary card for that particular region as well so this is how you can access your features layers the arcgis layers that you have within your s3 account now in case you have have configured something the uh, into the ArcGIS files like for example if you have configured the category the color coding within the ArcGIS files so that will also get saved into the S3 account and you will be able to uh, access those configured files as well into MapLadex. Now here MapLadex will allow you to access the feature layers, the polypoint layers as well as the polyline layers as well. So let me choose, uh, show you an example of the other files. So I'll just go for ArcGIS option again and here you can see I have an example of polyline layer as such and this will plot the respective polyline layer that I have. <coughs> So here you can see the polyline layer has been plotted and similarly we have the pushpin layer as well. So here if I click on the pushpin layer, I can click on search and you will be able to see the pushpins have now been plotted. So this is how you will be able to access all of your ArcGIS layers on that are added into the S3 accounts and you will be able to use the overlay for the color code your regions and see the summary attributes as well to see the geographical insights and further make decisions for your organization. So this was the feature of S3 integration. Now let's move on to the enhancement that we have done into auto scheduling. So let me just refresh this map. <clears throat> So auto scheduling is a feature that will help you to create the schedules automatically for your team. So here, let me choose one of the view over here and here I'll click on search. Now here, let's say these are the records that I want to want my team to go and meet. So here I can simply choose the auto scheduling from the mass actions. I can see the auto scheduling section and here you will be able to consider all of these push pins and you can click on confirm to go to the auto scheduling section. Now here, this is the auto scheduling card over here. This will allow you to see the preferences that you want to consider while creating the schedule for the team. Now 
here you can select when the schedule should start over here you can select the users over here so let's say i'll choose two users for example and here if you are creating the routes for multiple days you can select the span of days as well so here uh, further you can choose the individual meeting duration the start time end time break time within the day as well as break duration within the day and further here you will be able to see the buffer time as well so buffer time will get added to each of the schedule and you'll be able to create the schedules in order to make sure that the salesperson is on time for the meeting now further you have an uh, additional option which is consider existing meeting so consider existing meeting will basically ensure if in case there are any existing appointments already created for the respective users that you have selected over here which means that auto scheduling will allow you to consider the availability of the users that you have selected it will understand whether a user is free or not at a particular point of time <clears throat> now here you can also choose the days they will be working within the week now here i'll go for the advanced preferences and here you will be able to see some more details for the respective uh, users as well as the respective meetings so here you can see the users have been listed i can click on edit you will be getting the details of the default origin and destination for that particular user and further you can also change this as well so here you can see the details of the user over here and you can you choose the edit button to change these locations as well so this comes from the configuration detail record now here you can choose how many meetings per day should be scheduled for example let's say i'll go for four over here now here i have chosen all of these preferences and now i'll click on proceed so i'll just deselect this just to save our time and here i can just click on proceed so this makes it a bit faster and now here now it will consider all of the preferences that i have selected into the cart it will further make sure that the salesperson get the schedule optimized schedule in order to make them travel the least amount of time based on the availability of the salesperson as well <clears throat> Now here we have enhanced this auto scheduling part after the scheduling. This will basically provide you some more information about the schedules that we have created over here. So let it just plot process. Okay, so here you can see the routes have been plotted on the map and now you can see the screen looks a bit different. So here we have added the calendar view as well. So here you can see the user has been selected and here you can see option day has been selected. So basically here based on the user that you have the respective day based calendar has been shown and here you can see the whole day schedule into the calendar format so whatever user you have selected and whatever day that you have selected based on that the first meeting that you have for that particular selected user that particular data will be shown into this strip summary option over here so you can see the data of the first meeting over here and you will be also be able to see the turn by turn directions into this card itself so here you can click on go next as well and you will be getting the details for the next day as well so you'll be getting the calendar of the next day for the respective user as well so here you can further change the user to see the respective calendar for the respective users now here you can see the legend card this legend card basically allow you to see which color represents which particular user so you can see the pink color is showing me for sam and if i just switch to william you can see blue color is showing me the schedules for william and similarly if i want to go for the week based calendar so here you will be able to select week and here you will be able to see the whole week of the respective users so you can see how the week looks for them so here you can see the respective details of the schedules you can click on next as well and you'll be getting the details of the schedule for both of the users over here so here you can choose the day or week based on the respective users that you have selected so even if you are into the week here you will be able to see the respective 
details of the users that you have selected so you can see the legend has changed a bit now it is showing me the color for the respective weeks over here so here you can see say uh, sam has been selected for this week and so based on that particular uh, the schedule the four schedule should be shown into this trip summary panel so here you can see the trip summary you can see the turn by turn directions into the same card as well so this is how you will be able to uh, use auto scheduling further you will be able to see the calendar based format and you can see the trip summary as well for the respective schedules that you have created for your sales team so here this is the auto scheduling enhancement that we have done into our latest release now next move on to the next feature that we have on the list which is the option to plot multiple data sources together on the map so earlier we had this option of plotting the multiple data sources however it was restricted up to three data sources so now we have removed that restriction and now you will be able to plot multiple data together on the same map <clears throat> so here let me choose some view and let's say i'll go for accounts then contacts so i'll choose some view over here and I'll, let's say i'll go for leads and i'll choose the view i'll go for let's say cases and let's plot the opportunities as well okay so here you can see instead of three i have selected five now here this will plot all of these five uh, data sources together on the same map so this is how you can see the layer menu as well so you can see the layer menu and you can see three uh, instead of three i have plotted five different data sources on the map all together on the same map and i can interact with these data as well if I want, I can categorize my records on the map as well. So this is how you can choose to plot multiple data sources without having the restriction of plotting a maximum of three data sources on the map. Now, moving on to the next option, which is the street view. So this comes very handy while the salesperson is out on the field. And if they are traveling to any particular location, they can just see some more relevant uh, information, uh, the basically relevant access of the same road that they are traveling on the field. So here, while they are out on the field, they can simply right click at that particular point of location and you can further see a new option over here, which is the street street view so here you can click on the street view and you will be getting the respective street view of the respective road that you have you are traveling on and here you can just click on arrow button as well and you can just move around within the road so this will basically allow you to move around into the road and you'll be able to uh, 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 basically understand the respective road and you will be able to better relate to the area that you are traveling on so this will help you to meet the clients on time based on the access of the street view and you will be able to understand whether you are traveling and following the route perfectly or not so this was the option of street view that we have added into our latest release now let's move on to the second last feature of the uh, of today's webinar which is the dashboards so here we have the dashboards that you can create for multiple uh, data the multiple filters that you want and you can create multiple dashboards to see a lot of data into a single glance so here i'm opening one of the uh, dashboard that i have created this dashboard basically shows you all of the open cases that are within the respective postal codes so you can see the open cases are there now these open cases have further been cla uh, classified the categorized based on various owners it has so here you can choose the respective 
uh, see the various categorization and the colors of the categorization you can hover on the pie charts to see the respective details of how many postal codes how many use cases are there into the each of the postal codes now the enhancement that we have added over here is these donut view over here so here you can see the person pages that are for the respective open cases for each of the owners right so you can see the uh, the uh, count of the open cases as well. So, for example, here you can see the uh, the owner Joe Smith has 20, uh, 32 open cases, and similarly William has fifteen and Sam has five. Now, if you want to filter your data, you be based on the attribute of the uh, uh, count over here. So you can just click on this particular donut and you will be able to filter your data as well. Now, similarly, you can do it for the other owners as well. So this is how you will be able to filter your data based on any particular attribute that you have chosen for the categories. So now that you have filtered down the data, if you go, want to go back to the origin, original uh, page of map, so you can click on the master donut over here. You can just reset the filtration that you have done over here. So here you can see, again, you are able to see the respective pie charts for the showing the respective open cases into the various postal codes. Now here, if you do not want to see this donut panel, you can just click on collapse button. This will allow you to hide this donut. If you again want to see it, you can just choose the same button. So this is how you can choose this, use this uh, dashboard enhancement and you will be able to interact with the data more and this will make your analysis of the data very easy. <clears throat> Now let's move on to the last feature that we have listed for today's webinar is the PCF control. So we have added a new PCF control that is the auto suggest PCF control that you can add to any particular field with the data type single line text field. Now here I can just go for the map button because I have added this PCF control to this particular field of street one. Now here you can see you can see the option over here a uh, blank field what the use of this is that while you want to create any particular record for a specific location what you can do is that you can just type in the location over here like this and you will be getting the suggestions for that right so here you can see a whole list of suggestions have appeared over here now what you can do is that you can simply select a suggestion that you want now see what happens if i select the suggestion you can see the respective detail has been listed into the field as well okay so this means that while you are typing some address over here and you can select that address and that address will be filled into the address fields that you have into the form so this basically also ensures that your uh, address is correct as well as the geo coding will be done correctly so basically as for the rule of the geocoding whenever you create a new record or you update something into the address fields the record gets updated with the geocoding values right so whenever you add uh, select any particular address from the address suggestions you will be able to add that particular address into the address fields with just one click and the respective record will be geocoded as well automatically now here you can see an additional button at the right hand side so this is my GPS location. So let's say you want to create a record for your own location. So this is a very common use cases that I have uh, crossed over while we, I was talking to many of my clients that the salesperson are out on the field and they want to create a record for their own location right now where they are traveling. So for that particular thing, they can just open the record form and here they can click on GPS option. So here it will ask them ask for their location and you can see that it has 
fetched the respective gps location of my uh, gps location of my device the desktop and the respective detail has also been filled into the uh, the fields over here so this is how whenever you are searching for your own gps location you can just click on my location over here and you will be get you will be able to fetch your own location and set that location with just one click within this address fields and again because i have changed something into the address fields this will you get geocoded automatically as well so this ensures that while the field person wants to create a route for any particular location on the map or their own location where they are traveling right now so in that case they will be able to enter the correct addresses and avoiding all of the wrong geocoding or the or no geocoding you can just avoid those situations and you will be able to enter the correct addresses based on that it will automatically geocode the records as well <clears throat> so this these were all of the features that we have added into our latest release now here let me just open a little poll over here so you can just choose the feature that you see the most useful for your organization so i have uh, launched the poll please vote in for the features that you want to uh, you see the most useful for your organization okay then uh, thank you so much for your votes and let's just start with the q a session and please type in if you have any queries i'll be glad to answer the queries for you so Eden has asked a question, uh, can I create dashboards for my custom entity? Yes, Mapletics works for any custom entities as well. So the first thing that you have to do is create an entity map for your custom entity. And next thing you have to do is geocode the custom entity. Once you have done that, you will be able to plot those custom entities on the map as well. Along with that, to answer your question, you will be able to create the dashboards for your custom entities as well. You can further select like any particular filters using the advanced find within the CRM you can you can just go through the user manual where you have to just paste the fetch XML of the advanced find and you will be able to create the dashboard as for your filters for your custom entities let me know if you need any help with that I can uh, share the blogs that we have written for the step-by-step -step instructions as well as we can also connect for a call to help you with the same Please type if you have any questions. <clears throat> uh, Peter has asked a question, can I overlay S3 layer with CRM data? Yes, so this is uh, the RGIS files are basically accessed within the feature of overlay. So with the overlay option, as the name suggests, you will be able to plot multiple layers of data on the map so if you want to see your arcgis files along with the uh, respective crm data you can do so please use the chat window to type in if you have any further queries Uh, Latam has asked a question. So if I have made changes to my RTS file, will I be able to see those changes into Mapletics? So yes, if you have made some changes to the RTS files, so those changes will also get saved into the S3 account and you will be able to access those RTS files within Mapletics as well. Along with that, you can also choose the category attribute and the summary attributes to further uh, color code your uh, regions as well as the respective summary attributes that you want to see on the map.
school route along with the, along with the respective uh, route that was proposed to them. So the route that was given to them in order to uh, have them follow that route, that uh, route proposed route as well as the actual route, both will get plotted on the map. <coughs> Please use the chat window to type your questions. Okay, Rick has asked a question if the auto scheduling works with field service. So yes, Mapletics works with field service as well. So you can use the auto scheduling for field service as well. You'll be able to create the uh, the optimized uh, schedule for your bookable resource book, uh, resources as well as you'll be able to create bookable resource bookings as well for your field service people. And once the bookings has been have been created, you'll be able to see those bookings within the schedule board as well. Please let me know if you have any questions. You can just type in into the chat window. <clears throat> Uh, Sierra has asked a question, uh, will I be able to access the records from the auto scheduling section? So you have a little hyperlink into the uh, trip summary panel. You can just choose those hyperlinks to open the respective records right from the auto scheduling uh, section as well. So I'll just wait for a few more seconds. Let me know if you have any questions. <clears throat> So I guess I have answered all of your queries. If you have any further queries, you can just mail me at crm at inotic.com. And the slide that I'm showing you over here, this will be shared with all of the attendees. You can just go through the various case studies that we have received from our valuable customers and partners, the respective testimonials that we have received from our partners. And further, you can just activate a free trial for Mapletics if you are new to Mapletics. And this free trial will be uh, available for valid for 15 days. You can just mail me at crm at inogic.com along with a quick brief about mapping requirements that you have. And I'll be glad to schedule a demo call along with the Q&A session based on the especially the mapping requirements that you have. <clears throat> Thank you so much for uh, attending this webinar and I'll be looking forward to your valuable feedback on our features that we have added into this release, especially the mobile UI that we have revamped into our latest release. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or any feedback regarding the same. Our team will be glad to consider your valuable feedback. Thank you so much again for attending this webinar and we'll be in touch and we can connect again soon with the next webinar that will be in a few months with the latest release of our upcoming release that we'll be doing and till then take care bye bye